Hey all, welcome to my um, routing and switching video series. As you see on the screen, um, I have laid out a very simple um, and basic um, network topology. Um, so we'll be making a couple of video series on uh, based on this topology, uh, building from the scratch on um, layer three connectivity and two and pings and um, configuration of BGP and OSPF and um, would be redistributing BGP and OSPF and OSPF into BGB. So let me uh, start with um, giving you a um, high-level overview of this network topology. As you see on my left, I have a Campus 1, and um, I also have Campus 2. They're both connected to my um, core switch, and our distribution switch, distribution switch is connecting to my edge router, the ASR router. Um, and then the ASR router is connecting to ISP1 and ISP2 for redundancy purpose. Um, so then the ISP1 is connecting to your data center 1 in New York, which is primary, and the data center 2 in Dallas, which is a secondary network. And as you see on the data center side, my data centers, I have um, edge router, router 2 and router 3 in both DCs, and behind, behind those routers, I have... Um, Again, um, external switch, or you may call it as external um, core switch. Beyond that, we, are, we have um, our um, DC infrastructure, right? All our DC equipment. Um, and we have these networks like 188.1.1 web database and application um, subnets. So uh, in this topology, um, we, uh, as we speak, um, we don't have any connectivity. We only have point-to-point uh, -point connectivities from this campus to the gateways and between the router to their uh, external switches and nothing else other than that. So we'll be building everything from the scratch. Um, at the end of this video, uh, video series, um, we will have campus one and campus two in a position to reach to data center one in New York and access those subnets, um, the DB web and application, as well as the data center two subnets uh, web app in DB in the Dallas 2 and uh, again in return D, uh, data center 2 and data center 1 would have a route over campus um, networks which is uh, VLAN 100, 100 and 1.1 and VLAN 200 and 200.1.1 so once we um, able to um, configure everything uh, and uh, we have end to end connectivity between campus 1 campus 2 to DC 1 and DC 2 then uh, we'll be playing with um, uh, making ISP, which is primary, and ISP2 as a secondary. Uh, we'll just switch the roles. We'll make ISP2 as a primary and ISP1 as a secondary and, uh, using the BGP path manipulation or load balancing. There are multiple ways we can do that, so I will cover everything. So based on this topology, we'll be um, um, configuring lots and lots of BGP configuration um, from the scratch, from basic to all the way high end. Um, um, yeah, we also be doing EIGRP, OSPF, everything in the routing which I have learned all these years of my experience. Uh, so as we go, um, as I remember new term scenarios, I will put those scenarios on this lab. Uh, we might add few more things to this lab, or we might take uh, based on our requirement of that video series. So before, so let's get started. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, as you see here in the campus one and campus two, I have a PC one, which is able to ping to its default gateway 100.1.1 VLAN, which is reside the default gateway residing on my core switch here, and uh, PC two. There you go. It 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 is in a shape. It is in a position to ping its own default gateway 200.1.1. Let's try pinging to the Campus 1 network from the Campus 2 network. It's able to ping. So all those packets will go to this switch um, and from there, that's how they're learning their network. So, all right. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and start building um, our OSPF. And so as you see here, um, between my ASR router and my uh, distribution switch, I have an OSPF area 85. That's how this switch, core switch, will be advertising its route VLAN 100 and 200 subnets to the router, ASR router 1. 
and router 1 in return would be advertising these internal routes to ISP 1, ISP 2 via ISP 1, ISP 2 to router 2 and router 3 and router 2 and router 3 would be advertising those same campus 1 and campus 2 routes to external switch 2, um, external switch 3 respectively and all the way to their, uh, their endpoints. And so this would be you use here as a standalone bare metal server EXXI host where you would have thousands of VMs deployed, storage VMs, application VMs, database VM, um, you name it. Um, right. Um, so the, our goal is to use this sitting in campus one and campus two. Hundreds of thousands of users sitting in, um, would be should be able to access um, the application and the data or um, web services hosted on your data center one and data center two. So I'm going to capture as much as I can. Um, but in real scenario, um, you will you will have many more endpoints. Uh, hops in middle for example you would have uh, access switch connecting to distro distro to the um, ASR router and your ASR router would be some scenario would be connecting to your ISP provider edge router um, there will be BGP between provider edge, router, provider edge router and customer edge router but here to keep things simple I just have a BGP um, to the router two and three, so ISP is just a transient, it's transparent. Um, and we can also have that kind of scenario in the live environment, right? Um, so let's get in, um, go started. Let me log into the external switch one and see what is going on there, what configuration we have here. If I um, say show IP interface brief, um, unassigned, so these are my networks 192.168.1.2, which is pointing to the ASR router, and my 100.1.1 and 200.1.1, my internal and directly connected networks. If I do show IP route, I don't have anything in my route routing table because we haven't configured anything. So let's go ahead and bring our OSP of area ID5 configured first between the external switch 1 and route 1. So let's get started. So um, external, I will log on to the external switch 1. I will call router OSP of 100. I have to enable my, um, I have to enable the IP routing, enable IP routing, IP routing. That's it, this command will take care. I would go and do the same command. Um, sorry. Outer OSP 100, let's call this OSP 100. And I will advertise all my local network. <coughs> Right, so I always have a habit of doing this command show run sec OS here just to see what is my running configuration for OSPF. So this is my configuration here. I'll save this here. Let's go to the order 100. Oh, you know what? Let me increase the font size here. Two settings, you save uh, appearance, font settings, put in. All right, I think this is better. So let's see what what what, is, what routes I have in my routing table. So there is nothing I have configured, no routing, but it doesn't hurt to go and check it out. Show it out. So I only have 172. 10 dot and 192 directly connected point to point networks in my routing table. I don't have anything other than that. So let me go ahead and configure the OSP first. First thing first, um, draw the OSP of 100. Okay, now I would advertise my 192, 185. So uh, to form OSPF, you have to have configured in the same area 85. So and then I will show IP OSPF. Show IP OSPF neighbors. All right. So our OSPF is up between um, the router one and external switch one. If I go to the external switch one, show IP OSPF neighbor. It's up. And then if I do show IP route. Now I would have few routes in my routing table. 100, 200, and 192. Show IP route. 
Now you see here uh, once our SPF is up and as we configured um, as we had started advertising 100 dot and 200 um, networks in the OSPF on external switch one. Now those routes are being populated in our routing table in router one. Right. Um, so from router one, I should be in a position to ping my 100.1.1.2. There you go. So two is this guy sitting in the campus one, as well as 200. 200 is this user, this gentleman sitting in the campus too. All right, so let's go ahead and save this configuration. Um, all right, so in this video, uh, you saw how simple, was, uh, simple it is, um, at least on this, uh, our lab-based environment to configure, to have reachability from um, campus one, campus two users to access your router. So just to prove that, um, let me log into the PC1 and PC2 and try to ping my router. Ping um, 192.168.1.1. See, I should be able to ping 192.168.1.1 from PC1 as well as PC2. PC2, come here. There we go. We have full reachability from Campus 1 users to the ASR router. So in the next series, we would be configuring a BGP between router 1 and router 2 and router 1 towards router 300. And we'll see the BGP configuration and peering coming up. Then we will see what routes we are advertising, what routes we are learning. Uh, uh, you know what, let's um, go ahead and configure the SPF in our data centers 1 and data center 2 also in the same video. Uh, but in live environment inside your data centers, um, you won't have OSP running between your edge router and the, um, the service leaves or um, the core switches. You would have IGP uh, protocol running in or in IGP, IBGP internal um, BGP protocol. Um, and you would have external BGP obviously towards the external, but internal you would be running uh, IG, IBGP. Uh, but to, for, for sake of this video, I'll just um, Wanted to go with OSP of area 80 and area 50 respectively for data center 1 and 2. So let's um, go and um, configure the OSPF on router 2 and router 3 as well as the external switch 2 and switch 3. So let's go to router 2. Show IP route. I don't have anything other than the directly connected routes in my routing table. So we'll say conft. And we will start advertising this network and show run sec SPF. So always uh, run this command and see what configuration you just made is being um, added to the config or not. Otherwise, there is no point sitting for hours and troubleshooting when you don't see the BGP or oh, sorry the OSPF or any protocol neighboring doesn't come up or some issues. So it's always a better idea to um, do these commands and. Let's see your routing protocol configuration. All right, um, so um, let's hop on to the external. Let me save this. Um, let's log into the external switch two. Let me increase the font size. Um, change settings. Save appearance. Fourteen. Okay. Apply. All right, so let's show IP route. Let's see what we have. Nothing. So con FT. Let's call this as a router SP of 100, and um, we will start advertising our 20 dot network as well as the 40 dot network here. Uh oh. So let's enable con FT IP routing. Right. Okay. Then the show IP OSPF neighbor. All right. Our OSPF neighborship is up between the external switch two and router two, and see what routes I'm running now. Show IP route. 
I have 20 dot network, 40 dot network, but I am still not learning 170 to 168 route uh, between the router 1 and router 2 on my external switch 2 because there is a reason why, but we'll get to that reason later on, right? Um, so let me save this configuration. Let's go to router 3. Okay, there you go. First thing first, increase the font size, change the settings, save, appearance, change, put in, okay, apply, show IP route, con FT, and router 3. So, on router 3 will again um, advertise our directly connected routes to the external switch uh, 3. This is 30.1.1.10. Rotors and let's call this area 80. Um, and right, let's see what configuration I made here. So, SPF. All right, um, so I have this configuration OSPF, right map, set the configuration, hop on to the external switch 3. Change the settings, change the settings, appearance, change. Show IP router. Nothing here, so do this IP routing. Let's enable this first. On external switch 3, and we will be advertising our. Um, let me move this a little bit. Um, advertising our <clears> 30.1.1 network connecting to the router 3 as well as my internal VLAN 60, 60.1.1.0 in our OSPF. And show run sec OSPF. So it once I know my OSPF configuration, I will go and save it. Then I will see what routes I'm running now. Okay, and same scenario here. Even though I have my OSPF up with my um, the router 3, but still I'm not running any routes from router 3 connected, connected towards the external network or 10.1.1.0 or anything. Because we need to do more configuration there, um, the only then we would be able to um, learn those routes right so now that our OSPF is up on all the routers um, between the routers and their external switches um, now the core switches sorry in the so i will put this um, put an end to this video and the next video will be configuring the bgp and we will see what routes we're learning and um, we will do some um, scenario based uh, troubleshooting also so thank you so much um, see you in the next